Today we're going to talk about repairing a copper sink. Uh, the first thing you have to understand about a copper sink is the fact that it's somewhat fragile. Although you're putting on a, a good protective coating, generally, uh, over time it's going to get worn away to some degree, so you have to take some precautions when, you're, uh, when you have a copper sink. Um, and one of those precautions is the water uh, that you use. Uh, it may have a lot of calcium in it and it may have a lot of other minerals in it, so saline, so you might want to consider uh, maintenance on it quite frequently. Uh, and some of the things that you might use uh, is your toothpaste. Your to toothpaste has a bit of phosphoric sometimes, uh, so you have to, and hydrogen peroxide, it always has generally, if it's going to have any whitener in it, it's got to have hydrogen peroxide in it. And plus it's a paste, which means they have to have a filler, and that filler sometimes uh, could be pumice, uh, or some kind of an abrasion material, some kind of a sandy material. So when you're using uh, either toothpaste, uh, this new uh, whitener that you, a lot of people are buying today uh, has a lot of things in it that are going to take the patina away. So these are going to abrade the patina over time. You can see here in the bottom of the sink where over time this is what would have happened. It starts to abrade the bottom as, as all of those chemicals are going down into it. Uh, one of the things you need to do is always have your water running uh, when you're washing your mouth out after you've used toothpaste, uh, the whitener, or uh, or some kind of like Listerine for gargling, uh, you know, for breath. Uh, so those are things to really consider. Also, what you're going to clean your uh, copper sink with is really important. You want a very mild detergent. You don't want some of something like this, uh, which has phosphoric acid in it. This is a tile cleaner. Uh, but you might decide you're going to use it on your copper sink. Be very careful what you use. Read the label first before you decide to do it. Uh, here's another one. This has bleach. Uh, now we're going to get ready to actually bring this surface back to the patina that's on here. By the way, this patina is a ferric nitrate patina, uh, and it was put on hot. So they heated up the peened copper, and then they sprayed on their ferric nitrate, maybe ferric nitrate, ferric chloride, which we sell uh, on here. But you cannot heat up your uh, sink because it's already installed. So now you're going to have to go back and do kind of a faux finish. You're going to put a, something on there. It's going to sort of duplicate the color that's already there and then after that we'll seal it. Okay, so uh, all your sinks come sealed but some of the sealers are better than others. If they just used a straight lacquer it's probably not going to last too long. If they used a two-part epoxy urethane or something like that, uh, uh, urethane resin, uh, it probably lasts a lot longer. So now we're, we've got it cleaned. So we're ready now to put on our... Now you have to consider that when you do this you're going to have to let this sink sit for about 12 hours before you can put on your seal coat and then you're going to have to let it sit another six hours before you can actually use it um, because the patina, it takes a while for the patina to bite into the metal. This is the patina we're going to use. Uh, this is our deep brown patina from Sculpt Nouveau. And these are little stippling brushes, sponge brushes. Now the patina is only going to take where it's exposed copper. Where the patina is still there, it's not going to do too much to that because it probably has a protective coating over it, hopefully. You can see this one is already starting to work. You might have to stipple it two or three times. So I might come back in an hour and redo this again. Now remember, it's only going to take where you've got clean exposed copper. Where you've got the patina uh, and you've got the protective coating over it, it's not going to take. And so eventually what we'll do is we'll make it all look the same. Going good. Okay. 
Okay, uh, this is about 10-12 minutes and you can see that the patina is starting to take and you're starting to get some of the uh, browns and blacks as you have all over the piece here. Uh, the base is coming nicely too, so uh, it's looking very good. Uh, once you've got the color you like, or even close to it, because you can kind of come back in now with a sponge, which you're going to need to do anyway to neutralize, you've got to neutralize this patina now. So once it's done, we're going to have to come back in here and neutralize with a sponge with water uh, before we decide on putting our top coat on. And that's probably about the only thing I can think of that would happen uh, would be that you, if you did not neutralize this patina uh, and you put on a top coat, you can maybe get a whitey film because you didn't, number one. Another thing that's helpful too would be would be to take a hair dryer. You can do that even though it's it's a sink, you know, installed. You can take a hair dryer and warm this up just a little bit. That also will accelerate the patina. You could actually take a hair dryer and accelerate this patina a little bit just by putting a little bit of warm water on, I mean warm air onto it. Also warm air or water, either one, would open up the pores of the metal and it tends to cause it to bite better because as it opens up, this patina kind of locks in a little more, and when it cools down, it, it kind of closes down on the patina. Okay, once you've got the patina that you like, color-wise, and you can look at it and see if you like it, or you're even close, uh, then you're going to want to uh, neutralize it. So, uh, first you probably want to neutralize it with water, and so you would just pat it over. By the way, Uh, these are uh, facial sponges you can buy at the drugstore. They're really nice for doing little delicate work. So what I'm going to do here is kind of neutralize what I've done. This will tell me if I like it or not too. And I'll let this dry. Again, you could use a hair dryer if you wanted to let this dry and see if you like it. If it's going to... Uh... You can always pull this back a little bit with some 4 aught steel wool too, but you have to be very careful how you're doing it. Particularly in the beginning, if you were thinking, well, this black is too dark, I don't think I really want that, and you want to pull it off, you could do it with 4 out steel wool now, but I would probably wait for one day. What that does is lock the patina uh, more into the metal, and therefore when you put the steel wool on, it's not likely to take it back to what it was in the beginning. I'm going to bring in just a little bit of steel wool, uh, and uh, and then I'm going to take it back just a little bit. Okay, water a little bit. Eh, not too bad. Looking pretty good. I'm pulling it off just a little bit. Okay. Now we're going to let this dry. And I'm going to put on a solvent thinner. That's to clean it off. Make sure there's no water on there. And then we'll do our final step. So now uh, the patina is done, and you can see it's matched up pretty good all over. You can see it's kind of a little dull in this area here. That's because this area here has a seal coat on it, and this doesn't have anything yet. So once we put our coatings on it, our lacquers, uh, this will uh, color will come to the other color that's here. Uh, the other thing is when you use steel wool, remember I used a little bit of steel wool, make sure you blow all of that steel wool out of there because if that gets trapped underneath the lacquer, there's a chance you're going to have little squiggles of, of rust. So make sure you get all of that uh, steel wool little particles that come off of the steel wool pad. Then I'm going to warm it up just a bit here. So also hopefully blow everything out. Remember, you could have used this before you put the patina on. And if you did that, warmed it up, then you would the patina would accelerate quicker. This is the lacquer uh, that we're going to use. This happens to be a what we call our patina stain, so it's our clear guard lacquer with our solvent dye in it and it's really nice. We made it very light 
and that means it's it's not very strong so that you could put it on over and over again and build up color if you wanted to We'll let this dry. And you'll notice it all looks about the same now. Can't tell what we did. Now if you didn't want any of this little black area, if you notice there are some blacks, that's because the patina is pretty strong you can dilute the patina 50% and again that will make it it'll take longer to get to the color but you'll have more control over what color you get uh, after we've put the patina stain on brown uh, then we're going to put a coat of clear guard lacquer over the top of that it'll just make that whole area a little bit stronger um, because abrasion is going to come in it eventually and it's going to get wore down over time but this will help stop that Thank you.